Hello again, violas. I am speaking to you once again from the virtual Benedetti sessions. Welcome to your fourth tutorial, and today we are going to be looking once again at Paganini's Caprice, number 24. So I thought we would just start um, with some fingerings for the theme, um, because I'm just aware that there are loads of uh, awkward string crossings to navigate if we were to stay in first position. So I thought perhaps the easiest way would just be to show you my music, if you could pause your screen whilst looking at it and take it down. Hope you can all see that. Um, and you'll notice that particularly from around bar 12, where we go into second position, and there are a few little mini shifts that we need to do just moving up on the semitone and extending our fourth fingers. So now you'll see from about bar 11, um, where I decide to go up into second position. That is so that we can just do a little fourth finger extension and we can help ourselves by on that second finger, shifting up a semitone and then stretching to the four. And again, here, up a semitone. So let's do that again. So um, this is from bar 12. Up a semitone. Now the fourth. Up a semitone. Once we've got our head around how those little stabilizers help us, um, we have to really lighten our bows and lighten our fingers so that we can't actually hear them. So in slow motion. It's only me that knows I'm doing that. I hope that will help you avoid uncomfortable string crossings and give your hand a little bit of extra stuff to think about, which is nice. So you may remember in the last video that I was talking about that thing of recoil for the fourth finger open A at the very beginning. This thing of the movement of our bow just to re-articulate the semiquaver. That is fabulous if we can do that. And there's now an added element to think about, which is this idea of the martelet stroke. So martelet is a word bandied around a lot by violinists and it's this thing of like a really regiment. <laughs> And the literal translation of martelé in French is hammered. And um, to get that hammered feeling, what we need to think about most of all is the, all the potential energy. Now, can you just feel that in our strings, that feeling um, of weight from our arms at the heel? And we just want to let it go. But don't let your bow come off the string. So in slow motion, we've got the energy being made at the heel and then... So it's worth mentioning, pointing out that in bar nine, it goes down to piano. So how do we make a piano martelet stroke with all that energy? Well, we do exactly the same, just with way less bow and maybe not starting right at the heel. So... All that kind of thing. And just grade it as it goes up and use more and more bow as you go. Variation one. What I would love to talk about here is bow control at the tips of our bows. The exercise is really to be as fast as possible in finding the contact point at the tip. It could be literally any notes, any random stuff. Make up your own exercises. Um, the, the trick is so that when we get to variation one and we're doing all this stuff, we can not just flap around here, but find a really sort of concise, like magnetic pull from our bows to our strings at the, at the tip. So now variation two. Um, this one, we really now need to think about fun bowings and bow distribution. So one thing I was wondering if we could try is actually in bar 48 doing three down bows there, just to really get those accents going. So from the bar before, this is bar 47. <laughs> If we want to do that, we need to get lovely circular bowings, a bit like how we're going to talk about next with variation three, all that circular stuff. So bar 49, we need to be really careful of all those up bows with the accents on them, because it can be quite easy for lots of up bows in a row to sound a bit sludgy. We need to keep them as crisp and articulated as possible. And the way to do that is to have a fabulous, active, supple, 
energised bow hold. So we can totally implement some lovely accents just by articulating with our bow holds. So with the tenutos as well, this is bar 49, nice and slow. We spoke about this in the Zoom, but for those who weren't there, the hardest thing about variation three is separating our left sides from our right sides. Our right needs like ultimate bravado and matador-like spirit. Um, and the right needs to basically be like the most diligent member of Her Majesty's International Police Force, working precisely and sensitively and diligently. So just quickly, let's just have a go at our right arms, what we have to do there. Make huge circles with your arms. And you can see probably that I'm lifting my viola up ever, ever so slightly to give even more friction and to get even more resonance on those strokes. Just do lots of those. And then we marry that up with some fantastic intonation work. As calmly and as um, patiently as we possibly can be. Let's use this as a really fabulous excuse to journey into that. Um, my checklist is to try and keep a nice sound. So I'm going to keep trying to move my bow as much as possible. Um, I'm going to be listening as much as possible to the resonance of my open strings. Listen to kind of the when the frequencies start vibrating and getting excited. So you, you'll soon start to hear those really subtle things just from your four strings. Before we move on, I would just like to show you this thing about the pizzas. So I showed some of you on the Zoom on Wednesday. I was just experimenting with using two fingers as opposed to one for these double stop pizzas. It can be a bit So if you use two fingers, I'll just get a bit closer to show you. Nice straight fingers using the pads of your hat, of your finger. Just try a nice one finger per string pits, and then, and they're much, much more together. Um, and then next level pits glory is to actually voice it. So we use a little bit more finger, a little more weight perhaps on the D string because it's the lower line that changes and is more interesting. Can you see it's nice flat? Look at where I am in the string as well. It's worth playing around with that. We touched on variation four a lot in the Zoom. And just as a reminder for those who are there and to let you know for those that weren't. So first, we wanna get a really strong sense of the pitch. So checklist, number one, play it through in first position, really listening to your intonation. Number two, sing it in your most beautiful singing voices. I'm sure you all have a glorious angelic voice. Uh, sing it at least say two or three times to really get it in your head. Third, Perhaps let's add this step actually. Third, play it in first position and sing it at the same time. That is a really hard thing to do, but the idea, what we're trying to do here is get that singing quality as loudly as possible in your heads so that when we're sliding up and down in our on our G strings, we know exactly which pitches we're actually aiming for and we can plan ahead so that we can hear them before we get there and somehow miraculously by hearing them loudly enough, our fingers will be drawn to the right spot on the string. That is how it works. Um, and then, once we've thought about the pitching, we then think about the physics of the shift and how light our fingers actually have to be from one note to the next. So from like 100% finger pressure on the string, which is like, like white knuckle indentations central to 0%, which is like just hovering above the string. A normal finger pressure for normal playing, I would say is probably around 30%. So it's actually quite light. We do not want very heavy fingers. Um, for obviously for loud stuff, you'll be talking maybe more 40, 50%, maybe sometimes even more. When we're doing pizzicatos, you maybe even want 70% because with pizzas, you want as solid a left hand as you can. It just helps the resonance of the string. Um, but for this, we would definitely want no more than 30% for our arrival notes. When we're shifting down, we want to lift off to about 5 or 10%. Can you hear that as it's going down the shift? That is what we want to explore. And think about where that movement comes from. If we go through it super slowly, combining those two things of a really strong pitch 
and a really lovely loose hand as we slide around. We'll be in a much stronger position to actually nail all the pictures and get it sounding like an actual phrase. Um, more on that later. Now, the next thing I just wanted to mention in, was variation five. And here, we need to think about preparing our hand shape and preparing our fingers as we go over the string. So, so there's a lot to think about so far, but I know you can do it. So... Did you notice how my fourth finger was already thinking ahead and coming around? So I was bringing my elbow right around as I went over. Now plan. Because the more we can prepare our hand, our fingers, um, and anticipate the notes that are coming up on different strings, the smoother and more legato our playing will be able to be. So in bar 103, I'm just going to show you one more bit of scaffolding that we can use to help us avoid that three string crossing. Let's instead go. Did you see what I did there? I was using the G sharp to the B natural as a little springboard to get up to the top B. And the idea then is that we lighten the bow and lighten the finger so it's invisible and we don't hear it. Finally, in bar 109, let's really make sure that we approach the string with a moving bow and lots of vibrato already happening. So... Variation six. The next thing I would love us to think about uh, is actually the pizzicatos in this one. A fantastic way of getting better at our pizzicati is just by practicing some scales in pits and that will really show up how actually difficult it is to be really rhythmical and pizzicato even just getting a steady crotchet rhythm going can be quite hard because we're kind of not used to playing constantly with our pizzas are we we can do like one-offs but it's quite hard to be consistently controlled so that's a fabulous thing to practice um when we have these pizzas in variation six they need to be incredibly precise rhythmically and with enough ping that they'll actually be heard pizzas are always um quieter than normal playing obviously so let's have a lots of lovely left hand vibrato to really wake them up that kind of thing okay so there has been a phenomenal amount of technical information in this video and i hope it's not overwhelming as always if anything seems totally unfamiliar do ask your teachers or just shelf it for a later date if you think it's a bit too challenging or uncomfortable or anything along those lines, okay? Um, just to recap, I just thought it might be useful for you guys to have a little list of things to think about. So in the first um, chunk, the theme, we spoke about a new fingering and we spoke about hiding those shifts and the extensions to find a lovely fingering that masks the string crossings. Then we also spoke about the martelet and that recoil, so marrying up those two things for the theme, that'd be amazing. Then for variation one, we spoke about control at the tip. That's a really important one. So come up with your own exercises to get a lovely bow control all around. Variation two, we spoke about the different kinds of articulations uh, with our bow on those up bows and being really, really precise about our bowing and the noises that we're making with them. Variation three, we spoke about the left and the right hand sides of our body, having to marry them up, but being incredibly precise and just allowing for both sides to be equally well prepared. So practice them separately and then bring them together. That would be fabulous. Variation four, we thought about lightening our shifts, coming around, bringing our elbows around, having an incredibly strong pitch singing going on in our heads so that we can forecast exactly where we're aiming for. Um, and of course, making it sound like a beautiful singing line as well. That is a given at all times. Then variation five, we spoke about preparing your hand shape. So bringing your fourth finger around, again, supporting from the elbow to mask the bumps um, of any string crossings as we prepare, as we go over. Um, and variation six, we just touched on those pizzicati so that they're really rhythmical and really fun and zingy. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. 
there's going to be a lot more time to chat about various different things going forward. So I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'd just like to reiterate that if you guys have any questions or queries, do ask. You can write me a comment underneath these videos, or you could tag me um, using the Benedetti Sessions hashtag, and we'll do our best to get back in touch with you guys. Um, but final thought is just to go about this calmly and slowly. It's a lot of new technical stuff, I'm sure for lots of you. Um, and the worst thing we can do is practice a lot in a panicked or unthinking way. Much, much, much better to just do 20 minutes, but in a really calm and focused and conscious way um, than not. So go into all of it, have a wonderful time exploring the music and the things your bodies can do for you. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys at the next session. Thank you. Bye.